Do you want to be the best on all legends? Today I'll give you free tips for every ultimate ability so you can pop off on any legend that you want. Ash's portal can be used through windows and smaller gaps, which you can use to your advantage to surprise enemies by facing into a room that they aren't checking, or facing out of a building when both your exits are covered. When you take a portal, you will be faced in a predetermined direction, which is forward. If you're being chased as Ash, you can place your portal and then take a few steps backwards to shoot the enemy in the back once they exit. If you also have a Valkyrie on your team, you can combine Ash's and Valkyrie's ultimate to get better range with your Valkyrie ult. Simply Ash ult on top of a high ground and Valk ult from there. Hey, you, you're finally awake. A great time to use your ultimate could be after getting a knock on an enemy in the open. The rolling thunder will force enemies to step away from the revive and allow you to push up to finish the kill and then close out the fight. The missiles will land in sort of a wave pattern, meaning that it also will explode in the same pattern. After landing, the first canister will take about 5 seconds before it explodes. You can use this to your advantage and wait for the explosives to go off before you start pushing your enemies behind the cover of the explosions. If a teammate gets knocked, you can use Bangalore's ultimate to hold off the enemy team and give you or a teammate a chance to revive them. The perfect timing to use Bloodhound's ultimate for a team fight is when you've weakened or knocked an enemy and you are about to push into the fight. In a perfect situation, you'll get all three knocks in the fight to extend the duration of your ultimate for as long as possible. After popping your ultimate, make sure to take a second and look around for any possible third parties. The red highlight from your ultimate will make them that much easier to spot. You can also keep occasionally glancing around mid-fight to catch any enemies trying to third party you. Once a fight is done, you probably still have some duration on your ultimate left. So after your fight, scan your surroundings off cooldown to stop any teams from sneaking up on you as you're looting. You don't get slowed or blinded by your Dark Veil, as well as the enemy's Dark Veil, and as such should dart in and out of the fair Fluid Wall when possible to confuse your enemies and stop yourself from taking too much damage. Even though Dark Veil is supposed to block scan abilities, it really doesn't. So don't expect it to give you cover against everyone and everything. The wall blocks Bloodhound's scanning ability, but if a person is scanned before beforehand, they will still be revealed after going behind the wall. As for Crypto's drone, if the wall is blocking the drone's view of the target, it won't be revealed. But if the drone can see the target, they will still be revealed to Crypto and their teammates through the Dark Veil. As for Horizon's ultimate, enemies highlighted by her ultimate are hidden by the wall as long as it blocks the view of the target. The same goes for Caustic, as his passive won't reveal targets on the other side of the Dark Veil. As for Vantage's passive, this information is also blocked by Dark Veil. The wall also blocks Valkyrie's skydiving passive, but after that it gets a bit tricky, because the Veil does nothing to block Seer's ultimate no matter what they showed you in the trailer. It also doesn't block Fuse's ultimate reveal. Mad Maggie's passive also works through the Dark Veil, so if she hits a shot, she can keep tracking you through the wall. The Dark Veil also doesn't stop Mirage or Watson from being alerted if you trigger a fence or if you kill a decoy. Here's a quick chart to help you remember, full credit to the Reddit user PKunkMeetArlo for doing the research and putting it all together. As it is considered deployable cover, the Dark Veil actually has infinite uses, but one very very strong use case is turning 1v2s or 1v3s into 1v1 duels by cutting off the line of sight between the enemy team, place a Dark Veil in between them and engage the enemy that's left on their own. Caustic's Nox Gas Grenade doesn't do enough damage to kill a squad outright. Instead, it serves as a visual obstruction to allow you to pass through an area, reset your team, or force an enemy team out of your desired position. If you want to take a specific room or specific house, you can throw your grenade in, walk in, and set up while there's nothing that they can do about it. If your position is getting pushed and what or both of your teammates are dead, the Nox Gas Grenade is essentially a get out of jail free card. Throw it on the ground, put new traps up, and reset inside of the gas. The gas from the grenade will stay up for 15 seconds, and you can activate the traps afterwards to keep the gas cloud up for even longer. If you can survive until the final ring, that's where Cossack shines. More specifically, this is where you can throw your gas grenade down and force all the enemy teams to fight inside of the gas without anywhere to run. Keep this in mind if you're heading into the endgame. If a team is holding a position with no signs of leave, Instead of flying your drone straight towards them and EMPing, place the drone somewhere near their position where they can't see it and then run up on them. Once you get close enough, but ideally still out of your own EMP's range, initiate the EMP. This will make it near impossible for them to destroy the drone and give you a chance to instantly move in with your advantage. The EMP's range is the same as your passive, meaning that any enemy that's highlighted in orange will be impacted by the blast. If you play Crypto, you have to carry at least one ultimate accelerant to recharge your EMP quickly. It's too impactful not to.
You can prevent your knocked enemies from getting a revive by placing the fire of the mother load right on top of them. To pull this off, line up the edge of the ultimate marker with the enemy's position. Once it lands, they'll have to crawl out in the open or tank the fire damage until they are finished. Since Fuse's ultimate activates in a cone shape, with the peak being where you point it, the higher you place the ultimate, the larger the circle will be. If you want a narrow circle, you can place the ultimate indoors or just on a lower piece of geometry. The mother load highlights any enemies inside of it, meaning it's incredibly useful in late game circles. Circles, even if there's no chance the enemies actually touch the fire. You can also place the motherload on top of certain broken buildings and reveal the enemies inside of them. Most notably, we have the streamer building on World's Edge. If you're fighting an enemy Gibraltar team in the open, try to hold on to your defensive dome for as long as possible. If the enemy team is forced to use your dome, wait until the bubble does the bump sound and starts flickering, which it does after 7 seconds. Then throw your ultimate anytime after that to guarantee that the enemy team gets hit once their bubble goes down. Remember that the defensive bombardment has the longest ultimate cooldown in the game, that being four and a half minutes. So if you don't have ultimate accelerance, you can really only use the ultimate a handful of times per game, and usually just once in the mid to late game. Before throwing your ultimate out, make sure that your target isn't under a roof, near a mountain, or has a Watson ultimate up. Because in some cases, the cliffs from said mountain will block the ultimate and make it not hit your enemies, meaning you waste it. The black hole will destroy doors. You can use these to your advantage to quickly surprise your enemies by throwing the newt on top of the door that they are hiding on, but you can get even better results by placing the black hole in the open with the very edge of its range touching the door. This will break the door and then suck the enemy out in the open. When throwing a black hole, you want to ensure it will pull an enemy out of cover. Ideally, you want to throw the black hole and pressure the enemy simultaneously, so they are forced to either shoot the black hole or to shoot you. Either way, they're in a world of trouble. When doing a full ultimate combo from high ground, you can throw an arc star and then immediately follow it up with your black hole. If you line the ultimate up correctly, it will suck the enemy into the newt right when the arc star would go off. Lifeline's care package can act as great cover. If you hold a position early, like a high ground with a lot of open space, put your ultimate down to give you a little bit of cover for later in the game. You can also use Lifeline's ultimate to block certain doors or hallways completely. As for how the care package works, you'll always find an evo shield in the first slot, which is facing where the care package was called. The body shield will always be an upgrade to you or anyone else on the team. If everyone on your team has a level 3 body shield or higher, this slot has a 100% chance of dropping a gold armor. If your team already has gold armor, it gives you a shield battery, med kit, phoenix kit, heat shield, or mobile respawn beacon. The second slot to the right will always drop a piece of gear such as a helmet, backpack, or knockdown shield of a better rarity than one you or your team has. If everyone on your team has all gold gear, the care package will give you the same item as the first slot. The third slot on the left will always give a weapon attachment that's better than the attachment for a gun on you or someone else on your team. In addition to this, you will also receive two small heals, so either syringes or shield cells. If you or your team all have gold attachments, the care package will give you free small heals instead. If you want to start a fight, you can always drop your care package. Any half-aggressive teams will see this as an invitation and immediately head towards your position. If your team is fully geared, you can place a black market boutique, drop your current armor, and pull an armor from the surrounding area that can act as a hot swap. If you try taking a duplicate item from the boutique, it will pull the item that is the farthest away. But when it comes to armor, it will prioritize health and then shield charge before range. If you're third partying a team that just finished up a fight, pop your black market and steal armors off the enemy team's death boxes to deny a reset. On some maps like King's Canyon or Storm Point, there is loot that cannot be accessed through normal looting. However, you can still see it with your passive and grab it using your black market boutique. The loot can range from smaller heals to purple or even golden gear or attachments. The Wrecking Ball breaks doors. This makes it a great tool to surprise your enemies and stun them in the process. Thanks to its damage and stunning ability, the Wrecking Ball can be used as a last ditch resort when taking a close range fight. Start your ultimate behind cover, peek out and throw it against your opponent for an easy stun and kill. If you are pushing an enemy who's hiding behind one piece of cover, like a rock or crate in the open, throw your Wrecking Ball on one side of that cover and peek them from the other one. Most enemies assume that you're going to be pushing from the side the Wrecking Ball is coming from, but the speed boost will carry you far enough to catch them off guard with a flank. If you're on PC, you can juke out your enemies with your life of the party by tap strafing. Simply run, slide, jump, start your life of the party and tap strafe 180 degrees simultaneously. This will turn you around fully, but your enemy will probably assume that you're going in the same direction. Even if you can't tap strafe, switching up your direction is vital. If you want to stay alive for as long as possible, run into walls and obstacles to throw off your enemies. If you're trying to fool an enemy and they get a hit in on you, you can always return to the spot where you actually 
activated your ultimate and have all your clones converge again. After that, you can step out of the middle and force your enemy to start guessing again. Newcastle's ultimate is a great tool to create space out of thin air, and can even be used to set up in late game zones where there isn't any cover to play. Assuming your lobbies are half sweaty, most teams will respect the walls and not try to break them because it simply costs too much ammo. You can also use Newcastle's ultimate to instantly take the high ground as ability allows you to leap up to 35 meters in any direction that you want. This means that you can reset on top of a nearby roof if needed, or just take the high ground to instantly get the positional advantage on any team that you're fighting. Thanks to the nature of Newcastle's ultimate, and since you can use it to leap back to your teammates up to 75 meters away, Newcastle can actually play some riskier positions. You can either play them in the front line and jump back to your team if things take a turn for the worse, or jump to your flanking teammate if they get an opening instead. Octane's jump pad has 200 HP and can be destroyed by Octane or enemies. This means that you can theoretically break a jump pad with your own grenades. You can also pre-shoot the jump pad for around 190 damage and then deal the final blow once you're midair to deny the enemy any chance of following you. You can keep bouncing up and down without actually going anywhere from a jump pad. To do this, stand right next to the pad and punch towards it so that the lead up of the punch places you on top of the pad. If you play on a map with tridents, you can also throw a jump pad underneath a stationary trident to instantly make it bounce upwards. And you can use this to safely look around you, as well as boosting at the peak of the jump pad to clear a lot of ground. Pathfinder's kit revolves around its grapple, but that doesn't mean that you're screwed if it's on cooldown. Remember that the zipline can help you get on that high ground or get a different angle on your enemies in a pinch. Since a lot of players keep forgetting Pathfinder has a passive, it actually gives you a 10 second discount on your zipline gun's max cooldown for the rest of the game, and it instantly refunds your cooldown. Because of this, it is a good idea to place a zipline when heading to a beacon to save yourself some time. If you're in the early to mid game and you are rotating and know that there shouldn't be any enemy teams around, you can place your zipline to cross an open area much faster and get ahead of your rotating enemies. Rampart's Sheila has a lot of unexpected uses. While the Sheila is supposed to immobilize you, you can circumvent this penalty with movement abilities such as wall jumps, bunny hops, and more. As such, there are many abilities that synergize very well with her Sheila and that will help you get past that pesky movement penalty. The more common known synergy would be combining a Sheila with Octane's jump pad, but we have seen some players abusing Sheila when going up Horizon's tactical as well. The Sheila also comes with a zoom ability. You can toggle this by pressing the sprint button. When you are mobile, this will zoom in by almost two times, and if the Sheila is placed, it will instead zoom in three times. Zooming in will also deploy a built-in holo sight, which will also tell you how far away you are from the target, much like a sniper scope. While Revenant's ultimate is an overall great tool to push a team and to get the entry damage or even an entry kill with, there's so many more ways to use this ultimate that I rarely see anyone do nearly as much as they could. Revenant's ultimate is a perfect tool to gain resources, either to loot a death box, running around looting in general, or grabbing a care package. Because if you die, you simply get sent back to your base with the items that you picked up. For additional value, you'd want to combine your Revenant ultimate with a high mobility one, such as Octane's jump pad, Ash's face breach, or Wave's portal. This allows you to not only push and surprise your enemies as a shadow, but also quickly re-engage after being sent back to the totem. As you're approaching the end of your 25 seconds right, of shadow form, a loud ticking noise will start playing, indicating that you're about to return to your normal form. When you do, you don't take the 50 health penalty, and you won't get sent back to the totem. I suggest trying to get yourself sent back before it goes away to avoid you from getting caught out by the enemy team, while your teammates are all the way back at the totem. You want to play Sears Exhibit right when you're close enough and committing to a team. This will give you and your teammates constant information on the enemy team's whereabouts, as well as giving you a warning in case a third party rolls up. Sears Ultimate has a shorter cooldown of 2 minutes, so you don't want to hold on to it for too long. Keep in mind that just because you have an exhibit out, this doesn't mean you'll have full information on the team's whereabouts all the time. Enemies within the sphere that stand still, crouch, crouch walk, or are airborne will not appear in the exhibit. Combine this with your passive or tactical for the whole picture. If you're fighting another team with a seer, and let's face it, if you're in higher ranked lobbies, you probably will, the team that deploys the exhibit first generally loses. Keep this in mind and either mirror the enemy team's exhibit after they activate it, or hold off a little bit and activate it when you feel the timing is right, because if the fight is drawn out, this means that you'll have wall hacks for a little bit longer than the enemy team. Skyward Dive is not only a rotational tool, but it can also be used for recon. If you already have a position and aren't planning on leaving in the next few minutes, you should use your ultimate and fly up into the air. This gives you an idea of where the enemies are playing, where they are hiding, and other kinds of vital, valuable information that help you in making the right decision. You have to be careful when activating Valkyrie's ultimate, as if you get hit before launching, the ultimate will get cancelled. It's also super easy for enemy teams to beam you and your teammates out of the air if you activate your ultimate too close. Be wary about activating the ultimate around a lot of teams 
or near an enemy team holding a nearby high ground. Even though the so-called out-of-bounds plays were nerfed, they're still pretty useful. If anything, they're more useful because nobody expects it anymore. To pull off a oob play, start your Valkyrie ultimate, fly over to the team that you want to fight, and then bounce off of a mountain. This will allow you to drop right on top of them, and if they don't pay attention, catch them off guard. Thanks to its laser sight, Vantage's ultimate applies passive as well as its active pressure on enemy teams. This means that you can force an enemy into cover just by aiming at them with the sniper's mark. You don't actually have to shoot, you might only have one bullet left in a magazine, but as soon as the enemy sees that laser coming at them, they know that they need to respect it if they don't want to get knocked. Despite their passive ability giving you a bullet trajectory visual indicator, Vantage's ultimate charges up so fast that you can get away with running a normal loadout without a sniper, and instead using her ultimate as a third weapon, that being your sniper rifle. If you use an ultimate accelerant as Vantage, it has to be activated from your inventory and it will give you about two bullets worth. If you're in a high pressure situation, it's a good idea to have a defensive pylon off cooldown. This means that if a team is nearby and trying to make an entry on you or on your team and you just placed a pylon down, it might be a wise choice to pop an ultimate accelerant just so you can replace the pylon if the enemies should break it. If you're stuck in the open or just need a piece of cover, the defensive pylon might be what you need. If a team uses Crypto CMP on you before pushing in, this will break all your fences, your pylon, and you and your teammates' shields. But if you place the pylon properly, you can use it as makeshift cover as you hold the enemies while they are pushing in. And if you don't know what the pylon will destroy, here's a refresher. It will destroy grenades such as a frag grenade, arc stars, or fermite, tacticals such as Bangalore smoke launcher, Cossack's Nox traps, Revenant silence, Horizon's gravity lift, Fuse's knuckle cluster, Valkyrie's missile swarm, and Maggie's riot drill. It will also destroy ultimates such as Bangalore's rolling thunder, Gibraltar's defensive bombardment, Caustic's Nox gas grenade, Horizon's black hole, Fuse's mother load, and Maggie's wrecking ball, Ash's arc snare, and Sears exhibit. To reiterate, the pylon will not destroy lifeline dark hail drones, lifeline care packages, Gibraltar domes of protection, Octane's jump pad, Loba's black market, or Valkyrie. <laughs> you can place the portal between two doorways when you are inside of a room to lock it. If an enemy tries to enter the room, they have no choice but to take the portal and turning themselves into an easy target. If you are in the final ring and need to win a so-called heal off, you can place your portal, run around, and spend most of its range, then place the portal next to its other opening. Then you can jump into the portal over and over again to stay alive, hopefully long enough to outlast the enemy team. If you're holding a position, Wraith can portal in any direction she wants. This, combined with her face, allows Wraith to scout for her team over 100 meters away from the home base. You might be interested in learning free tips for every tactical in Apex. That video, just, just click, this, click the video on the screen. It's good, trust me. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.